Guys and gals, I'm here back, with Mojo, and I promised you a video for those foreign engineers, exactly detailing the process to apply for the PE exam, and even afterwards, you know, maybe obtaining a job in the U.S. if you're coming from from abroad. I'm here today with my good friend Hamid. We used to work together, and he has some good information that he can tell you all about how to go about the process as far as applying for the PE exam. And they give you some small tips on uh, developing your yourself as far as for your career and some things to look out for when you're looking to apply for a job. Mm -hmm. So, welcome. Hey, hey, everyone. I am Hamid. Uh, I am Persian, coming from Iran. I had my bachelor and master in Iran. Applied for PhD in structural engineering. And I came to U.S. 2013, finished 2016, and uh, I applied for a lot of companies, and then accepted by one of the consultant engineering firm here in Raleigh, and uh, then I changed my job to another consultant engineers. So I have good enough experience about uh, how to find jobs. Yeah, you got it. Yeah, we can we can discuss it with you and we can share it with you. And I got my I accepted for the PE exam last April. Mm -hmm. So there were some questions about how to get the accepted for the P certificate. That there's a, it it has a process to do that after you ex, after you do the exam and you get accepted for the exam, you should send your uh, requirements. You should send all your documentations to the uh, evaluation committee, and this committee should evaluate you to whether give you the certificate or not. And this is NCES, right? That you're talking about. Uh, NCES does evaluation of your degree to see if your degree is valid. Okay. And after they did the evaluation, they sent it to the the. Com evaluation committee okay. to the certificate committee, I guess. This, there is another committee, there is a group of people, P, okay. people that they can they can give you the certificate. Okay, so actually the state boards. Yeah, so. or the state board. Okay, yeah, right, right, I got right, you. Right, yeah, all right. State board. So, first of all, you need to evaluate your degree because you are outside the U.S. Mm -hmm. So I was, I was educated in Iran. They ask your university to send them their, your transcript, uh, a letter confirming that your diploma was coming from that university, and course descriptions. So you should ask your university to provide all this documentation, put them in envelope, sign and seal it, and send it directly to NCS. Okay. I okay. So I did this, and they accepted my transcript and diploma. But for the course uh, descriptions, we don't have English course descriptions in our universities in Iran because it's it's not needed in Iran. Mm -hmm. there are, everything is in our language in Farsi. Oh yeah. And I communicated with NCS. They said I can do it by myself and just make a brief uh, description of each. Uh, of each course, for example, bridge engineering, I should, mm -hmm. I should make a table, bridge engineering and just saying the title. <laughs> and title your own translation. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Alright, yeah. I got you. So it's, I they've done it, my friends, they did that and they yeah. accepted. So I'm in the, that process, I'm, I'm doing that. Okay. After doing that, so I will send it to NCS and you should pay for that. I think 300 or 400 bucks. You pay okay. it, NCS after a month or two. They would get back to you and they would accept whether your university was Abbott accredited or not. Okay. Right? Yeah. And then they will send this evaluation to the to the board, to the PE board. Okay. Alright. After these things were done, you should send your PE reference recommendations and also the experiences that you had in US. Okay. 
the so work, the work experience. experiences. Yes. Okay, I got For you. PhD, you need to have two years of experience. Mm -hmm. For masters, you should have three years of experience, and bachelors mm -hmm. four years of experience. Okay. So, summation of all of these things, the board would uh, would evaluate you and see if you are eligible to have the P certificate or not. So, the process is very similar to a process for if you're coming from a, a U.S. college. Mm -hmm. uh, the only difference is that you have to make sure that your your university your was Abbott. accredited. Yeah. And that you know your course descriptions, if they ask for, are in English, mm -hmm. which yeah. can be a little bit of a hassle. What? Not that big of a hurdle, you know. It's no, just, it's you not. Know, yeah, you, know, you so. just uh, you should you, you should just provide it from your university mm -hmm. and you should gather the information. Cool. cool. Yeah. We had some questions about to find jobs. Yeah, find jobs. It's it's a little bit. It's not hard, but you need to spend time. You need to spend time to make your resume, your CV, mm -hmm. and then there are a lot of uh, job engines, search job engines in mm -hmm. Google. I can say like Indeed, like your LinkedIn. Oh uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, like Monster or something. Monsters, like that. yeah, yeah. A lot of job engines that you need to upload your resume over there, and every day you should check. Uh, about the new positions that are posted. Okay. And you should go to the descriptions, read the descriptions, see if you are fit for those positions or not. Like mm -hmm. whatever you do, I mean, that's oh, yeah. pretty much Simple the same process. for the uh, U U.S. educated or non-U.S. educated. Right. So basically, if you want a job, you got to put in the work. Yeah. Either way, you got yeah. to yeah. put yourself out there. Yeah, you need to sense. update your LinkedIn page. Because mm -hmm. in LinkedIn, people would come to your page and see oh, yeah. Yeah, what were your experiences, your resume, or how is that. That's true. Yeah. I've even had people contact me on LinkedIn, LinkedIn looking for jobs just because I worked at a certain place and they wanted to work, uh, yeah. work there. So, exactly. I mean, yeah, LinkedIn is a great place. Uh, for us as international, maybe English would be a little bit challenge for us because you should talk in the phone but after educating in US after three or four years it shouldn't be a big deal okay and and something that I should say that in your resume try to add as much as experience you had in US or in your country I mean don't say that this experience was in my country and it's not, it's irrelevant no okay it's, it's worth saying that and they I mean they, they, they would uh, rely on what you say mm -hmm. and you can show that, try to say that, try to show that uh, uh, you did those jobs and you are very perfect and whatever you are perfect. Mm -hmm. and don't underestimate yourself. Gotcha. You should show yourself. Gotcha. If you show yourself, uh, they would accept you and, and they would give you interviews. Mm -hmm. And there are lots of other tips that uh, we can, we can say that in details in another videos. I did a lot of job searching, I mm -hmm. did a lot of interviews, yeah. I was offered from different companies mm -hmm. and I think yeah, we can share it with our friends. That's great. Okay. The process of the visa. Okay, For those who are international coming from another countries, when you enter to the US and uh, you are doing education, you are on F1 visa. And as you finish your education, for example, you are getting your master or you are getting your PhD. Uh, three months before uh, finishing the that field, mm -hmm. you need to apply for F1 OPT. OPT is coming from uh, optional practical training. Okay. So USCIS, I guess, or United States, I don't know which organization is responsible for that but they give you a limited time after your education to practice in US for engineers yeah. we have three years is that without a job or do you need a job to no you need a job okay so I got you it. should have a job you should apply for a job and you should uh -huh. have a job and then they give they will give you uh, they are giving you three years mm -hmm. um, this period to practice in US if I you don't you. have a job you need 
you can be in the United States for 90 days. You should, uh, yeah. you should apply for this F1 OPT. Uh -huh. There are a lot of papers you should submit <laughs> for the USCIS. Yeah. And as you apply, the day that you apply, it takes 90 days for them to send you a card called EAD card. EAD. Employment Authorization Card. Yeah. And if they send you that card, by that card, you are legal, you, you can be able to work in the U.S. legally. Okay. If you don't have that card, and even if you are accepted for the company, you are illegal to work in the company. And the companies, they don't accept you. Unless okay. you have the card. I gotcha. Okay, so in these three years, the company can, if you want to stay in the U.S., the company can sponsor you for either H-1B visa or green card. Okay. Usually companies they start with H-1B visa. Okay. Is there a reason? Is it cheaper? It's cheaper. Okay. Yeah. Almost it takes uh, 3,000 bucks. Okay. okay. But green card would take 10,000. Okay, well, 10,000 yeah, for your card. Yeah, oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. Almost. And, that's, and the company will pay that? Yeah, the company, company should pay that. Okay. You cannot pay it. Okay, I got you. I mean, it was easy for us because I would tell to my company that I would pay that and mm -hmm. you will start the process, they don't accept because it's not legal. I got you. Mm. So, companies that start with H1B visa, mm. it's, it's a lottery. Mm. On each year, uh, USCIS uh, process 85,000 H1B okay. visa. All right. But a lot of more people apply for that. Yeah, so it's so. based on chance. Mm -hmm. Okay, you might be accepted and you might. So you actually you have three years. To get but you have three, three years. years yeah. okay. You have three, uh, three chances. Three chances. Uh, so if first year you are not accepted, you might mm -hmm. have two more chances. And yeah. each year your chance would go higher. And there are, okay. I mean, I've heard of and so at the end, if you if you are if you are good in the company and company wants to have you and wants to keep you, mm -hmm. they can start doing the green card. Okay. Okay. They can they can hire a lawyer and start processing the green card. Gotcha. And it depends on the company. Yeah. And the green card that's not a lottery process. Or is the it green also card takes yeah, the, the green card takes uh, one and a half year to one half year. Okay, yeah. so it's oh, so it's a long process. It's not like just yeah, it's a longer process. Okay, yeah. I got gotcha. you. And so when you apply for your green card, so I know for immigrants who come to the United States and they apply for naturalization, they have to take like a test to mm -hmm. know it, to show that they know you know random U.S. history facts. Do you have to do that as well? No, for green card, that's yeah. for citizenship. Since All these questions, yeah, we will discuss and we'll talk about them in future. Yeah, we can we can go on more details. Yeah. Right. And yeah, for those who are interested more, yeah, we can make we can make more videos about that. That'd be great. Yeah, we'll go in detail. And what I'll do is I'll put a summary of the questions that he was reading off of that we had kind of came up with together to tell you guys. I'll put it down in the video description. That way you can kind of follow along to the type of questions that we're asking. We touch base on some of these other questions as far as like finding a job, uh, setting up your resume. Mm -hmm. We have plans to make a video about that. Yeah. And also yeah, we are we are working on PE notes. Mm -hmm. And uh, you have a oh, very yeah. good experience on PE yeah. and SE. I had my PE. So in these months, I think it's, it was six months, right? Yeah, yeah, that, yeah. We Six are gathering <laughs> very good notes for yeah. you guys to have it, and you can successfully pass the PE, and yeah, you can follow your careers. Yeah, exactly, yes. exactly. Now, this, I should know this is for structural engineers, yeah. but, then, but I guess it also help for uh, the morning section structural problems for those of you who are not structural engineering. Uh, yeah, we have put in a, a good amount of time on these notes, and uh, both pass the PE exam. So we, we have our experience there as far as just general test taking tips mm -hmm. and what you can expect from the test. So look out for those notes. This is over 100 pages of notes. And this is not, you know, just drawn out, you know, block of words. It's actually formulas, yeah. uh, diagrams, uh, flow charts. So things you can actually easily tag and get to fast information. Mm -hmm. Please pass this video along. 
people know that those tips are on the way. As far as they want any kind of notes, they're coming. So, <laughs> so it should be pretty good. So thanks, Adam. Okay, you're welcome, man. Thank you. Appreciate it.